empty of independence, empty of singular. So really, here's the, like, so what means singular? Is basically singular over here is a something exists without any kind of perspective or parts or perspective or parts. Okay, so anyway, uh, <laughs> sorry, this kind of very loaded philosophical terminology. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, you know, the usual question what happens is that maybe all of you feel, you know, I have a full time job, all these difficult terminologies, you know, like how, how I'm going to manage, how I'm going to, okay, uh, this will be. Uh, Number one question. Uh, now over here, I think uh, don't get afraid and don't be intimidated by terminology. I want uh, uh, this. Is, this is very important for you. Don't get feel intimidated, and uh, you need to see those terminology as a, like a bridge. What is really important is behind this terminology. Okay, so really, although you sometimes when you're reading or sometimes such as this kind of you know right now we are, you, you might thinking like what he's talking about, <laughs> what kind of language is you may get kind of like a same question, but obviously you know if things are really easy then why we are here you know Buddha we, we all get enlightened. There's a something a little bit subtlety into it, but I think you should. You should keep it. What is the behind that meaning? And also, anytime when you r read prayer, you know all the Buddhists we read prayer. And I think it's a very important to at least know a little bit what really behind this meaning. What is this prayer saying? Okay. Uh, based on uh, that knowledge, and the pure intention and the faith, yes, miracle can can happen. So I think it's a very important. Any things, any Buddhist prayer in that you read, you, you need to really looking behind. Now again, this is also same in my culture. You know, my parents and my, you know, they do lots of prayers, and you know, sometimes I'll play with my mom, and I'll I'll, I'll do some practice with my mom, and I ask my mom, what does this mean? And then we, you know, kind of learn with a kind of playing and trying to. Share the knowledge. Okay, so again, uh, uh, since all of you have an uh, interest in the Buddhist Buddha's teaching, and I think you have to give some chance for yourself. You know, yes, it can be a little bit difficult sometimes because the terminology and the intimidation, but you need to push that limitation. And. One year ago, you are not interested, but then now you have you 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 got some interest. You have to push into that limitation. I was a really no interested at all. Now I'm. There's something there that I to discuss, is to express. I think you have to get to there. I think it's really important. That that means we are real Buddha student. Okay. If we don't get uh, I'm not interested, and then you just looking for something interest. And when you just looking for something interest, then I think we are not really become real student. And if we are real student, I think we need to challenge something you are not interested. You know, something that push you back, you push back, and make yourself really interested. Ah, that's interesting. Is let's let's push more further. Okay. So anyway. <coughs> uh, you know, every day, small time in the knowledge. You know, you should give you should give a chance for yourself, the teaching of a Buddha, teaching of a wisdom. Okay, uh, and uh, you don't don't think oh because I have a full time job and this. Um, I think it's really doable. I think it's doable. But of course, sometimes we think I want to know now and I want to. That kind of impatience sometimes 
you know, throw out. But really try, try little by little. But now, again, you know, today's time, the information, so many information there. You know, I can, <laughs> I met several, you know, students in, in the early times. <coughs> And lots of this, uh, I study my Buddhism in from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I study my Buddhism from YouTube. <laughs> and of course, the YouTube is easy. And uh, But, you know, you know, join into some kind of study group. Like here, library, we have here. And, you know, different centers in, in Singapore, which have a strong STEM study program. Then again, also, then study and then don't become so intellectual, dry intellectual and saying many things. There's no point, okay? And of course, you try your best to practice. Uh, so that's then, and of course, uh, that's I think the Buddha will be really happy. <laughs> okay, anyway, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, yep. My question will um, sound very dumb because I'm just uh, beginning. Um, about the emptiness, that mm -hmm. what we see is actually um, projection mm -hmm. of our mind. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there's one thing that always bother me because you know if it's projection, you know you, you're sitting on the table. We all saw that table, mm -hmm. so that is universal. Mm -hmm. But what if someone you know meditate at night? He saw things projected in a movie, mm -hmm. and only that person see. So how do we know it's real or not real? Mm -hmm. And how do we overcome? Mm -hmm. There are sometimes we get confused between what is real and not real. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really good question. A really good question. Again, in, in such a question, I'll use philosophical terminology in they call like in, uh, first let me say in, the, in Tibetan yang tao gunzop and lope gunzop means basically uh, correct conventional reality and incorrect conventional reality so there's a, this is the question is what you're asking this question the answer is basically in philosophical term we call yang tao gunzop sometimes there's a translate as a pure conventional reality and mistaken conventional reality so here what is the reality? Okay. Now, now in a, when you say this, quite when you, what is the reality? This is a complex. So, like in the Buddha's teaching, we call like conventional reality and ultimate reality. And now, when when we are talking, what is a reality? Is a really we are talking about reality, the conventional reality. Okay. So. So now over here, how we know? Uh, how we know what is the real? Now again, uh, I think in in a couple of years ago, there's a s there's some of the you know I think scientists that they made this what the believe we know. There's there's one documentary or this what the believe we know. It's the same question like what is real the real it is okay. Uh, so now over here, uh, let me put it this way. In, well, in one way, common sense okay what is a common sense and common sense will become some kind of a basis of establishing of a reality okay so now this is a really I'm speaking day to daily life language what is a reality you know use your common sense you know common sense something that's uh, not only seen by me 
is a lot of seen, seen by many people and agreeing, agree by many people. So we use as a common sense. But in a philosophical term, when you say reality, we say everybody seen and everybody agreeing. What happens? If everybody have a mistaken, mistaken perception. You know how we know what is. So it comes back to what is a reality. Is de depends on the perception. What is a perception? Now, that's again one of the huge fields of a Buddhist philosophy: valid perception and unvalid perception. Okay, how we know our perceptions are valid? So, so the to say what is a real or what is not real, you know, we need to have a, how you say, authoritative source or way it judged by subject. So perception becomes a valid perception or non-valid perception. So here comes how I know, another way to ask the question that you're asking, how I know my perceptions are valid or not valid. Or you say is a reality or not. So here is valid or not valid. So the minute we say valid or not valid, basically what way we see is uh, if there's any contradiction or not. Okay, what I'm seeing in my perception have uh, any another another perceptions contradicts with that. So if we don't, s if there's no any kind of contradiction. And that's the only the window that way we establish my perception is a valid. I don't see any contradiction, and there's no any contradiction was uh, presented. Okay, so what is really what I'm seeing is what is real or not real is a way we way we way we kind of move on is an e eliminating the contradictions when we don't see any contradictions. Okay. Uh, in a philosophical term, non-contradicting by ultimate valid cognition, non-contradicting by convention, conventional valid cognition. So, perceptions are how it's valid is uh, non-seeing or non-finding contradiction. S so, we are function in that much right now. You know, that is the only our safety guard. So, so basically, until we don't see emptiness directly, direct perception, we call you know, direct yogi perception. It's mo mostly we function. What is the reality and what is the valid? Is basically not seeing any contradiction. And that's a very unreliable base, but that's what we have right now. Again, this field of a valid or unvalid is again in a Buddhist philosophy philosophical is, is a also a big area of a discussion. You know, what is a valid? Is what's not valid? Is a complex. Uh, Okay. <laughs> Good question. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Maybe he's telling me stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 I will just do a short dedication, okay? Jambe Baba Jagarakan Baba, Kundosan, Gundin and Jazunja, to Dark Wingy Jason Bonaka, Gio to Dark and Jess. To Zunja, Java, Namja, Jimmy, Kano, Jodonga, and Dagi, Jim and Jim. Sango, Jiji, Rabdomo, and Gim, Gio Kundi, and the Lama, the Hundon, and Jimmy Dolamanji. Sadam, I'm Gim, Lena Bron and Doji, Changi, Kogon, do Changi, Simchur, and Doji, my dear Bunny. Keep 